Weeks main news. Opposition on Soviet party holds protests in central Baku. Youth protests dispersed by police. Human rights house Azerbaijan shut down. Youth activists appeal rejected. IDPS employs legally held. Journalists in Lafayette Lair's life endangered. Today, opposition on the Soviet party held protests in central Baku and sanctioned by Baku City Executive Administration. The protests launched at 2 p.m. in the central shopping district of the city went on in the seaside park. The protests lasted till 3.30 p.m. by local time. The area was under the control of the plainclothes and uniformed police employees as of the early morning hours. Nonetheless, the opposition protesters entered the Fountain Square voicing slogans like Put an end to Aliyev's regime, relatives of Qaddafi leave Azerbaijan, and so on. The police employees blocked the movement of the protesters forcefully and dismissed them from the area. However, after a short break, another group of the protesters entered the square shouting freedom and resignation. Besides, a group of youth activists voiced a religious Allahu Akbar slogan and disseminated papers calling for a struggle for resignation of the ruling regime. As reported by the Misabad Party spokesman Mehmet Zavadoglu, over 100 protesters were arrested during the protests, about half of them were set free after warning. Moreover, IRFS employee, human rights defender Russell Jaffaro was also detained and taken to police station. An hour later, he was told that his arrest was a result of misunderstanding and he was set free. It's worth noting that several ruling party leaders, including parliamentarians, Siavush Navruzov, Mubariz Gurbanli and Karim Karimli were watching the protests from a cafe. <laughs> There was a so-called emergency situation in Baku, Azerbaijan in regards to the 11 March Great People's Day arranged by a group of youth activists via Facebook to protest against the government. As of the early hours in the morning, the police took control of high schools and universities, underground stations, and central squares in the city. The first group of youth protesters kicked off their protests in Jafar Jabarli Square by May 28th, Metro, on 11.15. However, the police quickly detained some of them and dismissed them from the area. Turgut Gambar, the son of the Musavat party head, publicist Ali Akbar, and youth activists Tabriz Onar and Zawur Gorban Le were detained by the police at 12 o'clock near the Samad Borgun monument by the railway station. Liberal Democrat Party head Fuad Aliyev and four other party members were arrested near the railway station as well. Additionally, the police beat Radio Liberty photo reporter Abbas Aitali in the same area. Afternoon, another group of youth activists launched protests in Nizami Street near Fountain Square. However, the police blocked their way and began to harass them and journalists who were there as well. Several youth activists, as well as journalist Shavad Chobanoglu, Azadla's newspaper employees Elvin Hassan Le, Afghan Mukhtar Le, human rights defender Anar Mamad Le, were held. The journalists and human rights defenders were released shortly thereafter. One of the police officers kicks Tehran news agency photojournalist Etimad Budago in the stomach. In order to sue the protesting journalists, the police released the arrested journalists. By 3 p.m., the protests were finished. There is no accurate information about the arrested people and decisions made about them. A total of 30 activists were detained during the protest, 22 of which were set free and 8 which were taken to court. Human rights defender Novella Jafarogu told Objective TV. The Justice Ministry of Azerbaijan Republic has required the Human Rights House Azerbaijan, local partner of Human Rights House Network, to suspend its operation. The ministry has informed that the operation could only be restored after coordinating it with Azerbaijan government 
says the statement released by Human Rights House Network. The statement associates this measure with the fact that the House allowed the dissidents to express their opinions in its office. Today, the Institute for Reproductive Freedom and Safety also released a relevant statement deeming this measure as a political order. Human Rights House Azerbaijan was registered in 2007 as a representative delegation of Human Rights House Network. According to the amendments made to the law on NGOs in 2009, an international organization can only operate in Azerbaijan after reaching an agreement with Azerbaijan government. The Ganja Appeals Court has rejected youth activist Bakhtiar Hadjiev's appeal against pre-trial detention, reported Hadjiev's lawyer Aleif Hasanov. Hasanov alleged that the judgment was predetermined by government and judicial powers. He says that they will be taking the case to the European Court of Human Rights. Hadjiev, a former parliamentary candidate in the November 7, 2010 elections, was first detained on the 17th of November when he tried to cross into Georgia via the Gazak region's Girzimi Korpu checkpoint. He was traveling to Georgia to continue his education. In fact, Hadjiev was set free a day later as he still had immunity as a parliamentary candidate. At present, he is facing criminal charges under Article 321 of the Criminal Code for evading military service. It is widely thought that Hadjiev has been arrested for his activity on social networking sites and his support for the March 11th Great People's Day campaign. Today, at about 3.30 p.m., a group of plainclothes persons stopped employees from the Institute for Reporters for Freedom and Safety, Mehman Hussainov and Abul Fatna Mazov, who were traveling in a car owned by IRFS. The employees were forcefully detained when the car stopped at the traffic lights and taken to Interior Ministry Department on fighting organized crime, IRFS head Emin Hussainov told a press conference today. They were questioned about the 11 March People's Protest Day. This is a pressure on the representatives of an organization dealing with human rights. We'll take the issue to relevant agencies, Seno said. Today we were heading to the Economic University when six civilian clothed, sportsman-looking persons opened the door of the artifice car and forced us to get into two cars separately. Then we were taken to the Interior Ministry Department on fighting organized crime. The chief of the department told me that I was leading the group which initiated the People's Protest Day. He said the group was ruled by the foreign forces and that I was the head of its Baku office. I told him that I didn't lead any group and that I'm only dealing with journalism. Then he cited some notes from my Facebook profile and asked about them. They asked me about the notifications disseminated by the youth regarding the planned meeting. I told that I was only fulfilling my journalistic activity in that campaign. The chief told me that they will find those youth and told me to inform my friends not to relax. He also said that they knew that as if we are supported by U.S. Embassy, they related it to the U.S. Embassy visit card they found on me, said Mehman Seno. We were followed since we left the office. It was only when we stopped at a traffic light that they forced us out of the car. I questioned them why they stopped us and asked them to present their identification cards. One of them told me that he had shown it, but I hadn't seen. They claimed that I resisted the police. I told them that the cameras installed on the traffic lights could reveal if I really resisted or not. They also asked me if I had drugs on my pocket. Later they questioned about my identification, my family, IRFS chairman Emir Hussainov, the hours when I took him to and from the office and other IRFS employees. Then they took a statement of explanation from us and set us free, Abul Fatna Mazu said. It's also worth noting that the youth activist Edward Sanmali, who disseminated notification sheets about the 11 March meeting, said at the press conference that he is being followed as well. According to him, he was being sought out for by area police on March 7th, who cited Sanmali had cheated a woman. Imprisoned journalist in Fetullah's life is seriously endangered in prison, said Fetullah's lawyer Nargasimov at a press conference at the IRFS press center on March 7 evening after his meeting with Fetullah. Citing his life would be endangered in several prisons, including prison number 1, Fetullah had earlier requested to be transferred to prison number 9, where the former employers of law enforcement agencies were held. However, he was taken out of the Baku investigative prison at 5 p.m. March 2nd and taken to an unknown destination. 
After driving for about three hours, the car was stopped and two sportsman-looking persons with military uniforms got into the car. When the journalists questioned them about their identity, they had him laid down and one of them started to strangle Fatullah's neck with his foot and told him to shut up, said the lawyer and added that Fatullah was held in isolatory cell due to his request and again notified that his life in real danger. On the 29th of December 2009, 0.223 grams of heroin was reportedly found on Fatullah in prison number 12 and on the 6th of July 2010, Fatullah was found guilty under the charge of possession of narcotics. His sentence of two years and six months in prison began on the same date. His appeal against the decision was rejected. In 2007, in Lafayette Live, Etrin Chief Oriel Azerbaijan and Kundalik Azerbaijan newspapers was sentenced to eight and a half years in jail for threatening terrorism, amongst other charges. However, on April 22, 2010, the European Court of Human Rights ruled for his immediate release and financial compensation from the Azerbaijan government. The Azerbaijan Supreme Court plenum has only partially fulfilled the decision.